I had a friend who wanted to start his own IoT home automation business. This was a couple years ago. He developed some good prototypes, used his family as guinea pigs. I mean, test subjects. <laughs> Wait, that doesn't sound any better. <laughs> so, mind you, he's a software guy, mostly. So hardware isn't really his forte, but he pushed on. And he started to realize very quickly in the midst of outfitting his whole house to be smart in one way or another, what he truly needed to build for this startup to end all home automation startups <laughs> was an ecosystem. He needed a bunch of different communication standards, a quick way to test out a bunch of different sensors, and he really didn't want it to be too hard, you know? He had another software development design firm to take care of as well. <laughs> Maybe this sounds familiar to you too. Creating innovation in the world of IoT these days, a lot of times involves more than just one connected device. It involves a range of connectivity requirements. And wouldn't it be nice if we could just put all of the pieces of this connectivity puzzle together under one development platform with code compatibility, multi-protocol, and multi-band operation? Actually, we can. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. Sadly, my friend, whose real identity shall remain nameless, did give up his dreams of an IoT home automation empire. A little too soon, if you ask me, because I would have introduced him to the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kit from Texas Instruments. Maybe I could get him to watch this video and you'll... Uh, anyway, please welcome Adrian Fernandez from Texas Instruments. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Adrian and I sit down and chat all about the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kit, what it brings to the IoT design ecosystem, and how you can get started on your next IoT project with it. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kit from Texas Instruments. Hi, Adrian. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, absolutely. Happy to be here. Thank you very much. So in developing systems that wirelessly connect sensors and other things, I usually end up with a bunch of different development kits for the different wireless standards. Totally. Yeah. And that's definitely a use case that we're seeing with our customers as well, right? And we wanted to introduce a brand new kit called the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kit, or LPSDK for short, to really enable developers to have a one-stop shop when it comes to creating those sensor networks. We understand that there's different needs, different use cases, and we want to be able to provide a flexible piece of hardware that can support as wide of a use case as possible. And that's what we're really excited to talk about here today, Amelia. Okay, cool. Tell me a bit about it. Yeah, absolutely. So what you'll see here, and maybe before I jump into the slide set, is maybe a typical desktop of a developer. You know, you can imagine creating just one of something. You know, let's say you're creating a, a thermostat. We really want developers to go beyond that. You know, you're not just the thermostat company anymore. We want you to be able to take over the rest of the house or the rest of the building or the rest of the factory. And what that means is that you're not just going to market with one product, but potentially a whole portfolio of connected solutions. I'm hoping developers can relate to a desktop like this where you actually have multiple sensor nodes working together. Being able to have a single piece of hardware to facilitate that development experience is really what we're aiming for here. Yes, my desk is much messier <laughs> than that. My lab bench has everything bleeding <laughs> together. So yes, I understand. <laughs> Very good. Well, let's go ahead and dive in. I'll start off with kind of a high level of what this kit entails, some of the features, and then maybe we can jump into some use cases. So first and foremost, the kit is fully enclosed, and this provides a very compelling out-of-box experience. It's very affordable at $30. So we really want developers to not just buy one of these, but multiple instances of this kit so they can really quickly realize that sensor network, whatever that might be. So a few things to take note here is that the enclosure is removable. We want developers to go beyond the demo and actually start application development. So by removing that silicone enclosure, you get access to some of the onboard sensors that are on here. You've got a temperature, humidity, a light sensor, there's a three-axis accelerometer, and then a Hall effect sensor for measuring the presence of a magnet. You've got a couple of LEDs and push buttons, but then at the same time, you have the ability of extending beyond the out-of-box sensors that we provide, give you access to the inputs and outputs of the microcontroller, so you can bring your own components, your own sensors, your own displays, whatever that might be. 
At the heart of this, however, is the Simplelink multiband CC1352R microcontroller. So this is a very unique product in that it has both the sub 1 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz transceivers integrated into an ARM-based MCU. So it's a very, very powerful microcontroller for your application development, but also has a flexibility of both sub 1 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz connectivity. And you can see that physically represented here through a few antenna. We have a sub 1 gigahertz SMA swivel antenna, but then also there's a PCB antenna for 2.4 gigahertz connectivity. So very, very flexible piece of hardware here, all of which is powered by two AAA batteries. There is an option to power it off of a uh, CR2032 coin cell, but we wanted to provide some flexible battery options because it is a very low power solution where we're seeing some you know, users getting five to 10 years of battery life with this particular microcontroller. Wow, okay, yeah. That enclosure is going to protect it from that cup of coffee <laughs> I saw on the previous slide. <laughs> Yeah, definitely. <laughs> okay, Adrian, let's start in the middle and work our way out. Tell me about that MCU in there. Totally, yeah. So this is a very, very exciting product, part of our SimpleLink platform. It's an ARM-based MCU, 48 megahertz. It's a Cortex M4F, so you do have the floating point engine on board. This allows you to do a lot of edge node processing. You don't have to do everything in the gateway. You don't have to do everything in the cloud. You can do so. But this device is low power, but at the same time has enough sort of horsepower on board to do a little bit of that processing internally. And what that means is you can make local decisions without having to transmit it to the cloud every single time. I and mean, that's a big aspect to how we're able to get that low power capability and that five to 10 years of battery life with this particular solution. This device, again, is also featuring a multi-band transceiver, enabling both that sub one gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz connection. And we'll touch on some of the use cases that are possible with that flexible connectivity capability made available by this particular product. Furthermore, this device is also supported by the SimpleLink SDK. It's our software development kit that supports the platform as a whole that the Simple Link device is a part of. So you mentioned a platform. So is this part of a bigger ecosystem? It, it totally is. Yeah. So while this device is a very capable one, it's also a part of a broader family of connected microcontrollers. This is a portfolio that we launched a few years ago called the SimpleLink Connected MCU Platform. And what you'll see here is just a broad offering of connected MCUs, all of which are ARM MCU based, but you have both wired and wireless options available to you as a developer. So we have devices capable of an Ethernet connection. We have Bluetooth enabled devices, Zigbee and Thread enabled devices, as well as Wi-Fi enabled solutions. As I mentioned earlier in the discussion, Amelia, is the ability to create a complete portfolio of connected solutions, right? Some products might be better suited for Wi-Fi, some might be better suited for Bluetooth, some might be better suited for Ethernet. And being able to have one portfolio, one family of products, and be able to create that portfolio of solutions is, I think, a very powerful experience for many developers. The other key aspect here is that all of these devices, even with their various forms of connectivity, is unified by a single software development kit, which we call the SimpleLink SDK. And this enables code portability across all of these products. So with a single SDK, I see. But in the past, I have had difficulties where I had to locate a different stack and download it for each different standard I wanted to use. Am I still going to have to deal with that? Oh, great, great question. So that's something that we wanted to kind of remove the burden of that experience from the customer and kind of take that internally here at TI. So with our software development kit, we're actually pre-integrating those protocol stacks for you on your behalf. So all of the stacks that you see sort of mentioned and visualized at the bottom of the screen here, we've actually integrated it into our SDK. So it's been validated, it's tested, and we release an updated version of our SDK quarterly. So you can feel confident that we're rolling in the latest and greatest features and capabilities for each of these stacks within our SDK. So that's all been done for developers. Beyond integrating the connectivity stacks within the SimpleLink SDK, we're also pre-integrating peripheral drivers for your, you know, things like your I2C and your GPIO and your UARTs. And then we're also integrating a RTOS kernel. The TI RTOS solution is actually integrated as part of the SimpleLink SDK as well. So download the SDK, leverage our code examples, and you can immediately start your application development. Okay, so leveling up a bit, what kinds of applications do you see this being used in? Yeah, so with this broad offering of connectivity solutions, we're really enabling developers to connect every market, whether it's building automation, grid, personal electronics, factory automation, and even in some cases, car access with our Bluetooth capability, developers can really start connecting their solutions. And again, it's a, it's a one-stop shop. You know, you might jump into our portfolio because you're interested in Bluetooth or Zigbee or Thread, and you might want to start 
there. But eventually, as your portfolio starts to grow and your focus starts to pivot, you can stay within the Simplink platform and leverage that SDK and leverage that code portability so you can start pivoting and iterating and releasing more and more solutions while leveraging that initial software R&D. Being able to do that inside of one platform is, is I think, an exciting use case for many of our developers. Wow, that's a lot of different applications. Can you walk me through a use case or two? Yeah, definitely. So so this kit, this device, the LPSDK featuring the Simplink CC1352 is very flexible. Each of these end equipments, each of these markets have their own needs and requirements. So being able to provide a flexible piece of hardware is something that we were focused on from the very beginning. And what I'd like to show in this slide are maybe a few use cases, a few topologies that are possible with the LPSDK because of the microcontroller that we leverage. Being a multiband device, we can in some cases enable both a sub 1 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz connection simultaneously. And that's really what's visualized in this top diagram. What does that mean? You know, we could leverage a sub 1 gigahertz connection, which enables really long range, in some cases one to two miles of range. So you can imagine having 200 of these nodes scattered a mile apart from each other, you know, covering not just a home, but a building, a factory, an agricultural setting, whatever that might be. Wow. Wow. Okay. And at the same time, in addition to that sub one gigahertz connection, enabling the ease of use and ubiquitousness of Bluetooth, allowing someone to pull their phone or tablet out and connecting to that individual node individually with a Bluetooth connection. We could use that for provisioning too, right? Connect to a node via Bluetooth and then use that to set it up to connect to a central network. You got it. Yeah, with this particular sub one gigahertz stack, our TI 15.4 stack, we have secure provisioning capability integrated and being able to use that Bluetooth connection, being able to use a mobile phone to provide a sort of secure key to the node so that it can provision securely to the network is definitely a use case customers are excited about. In addition to that, we can use that Bluetooth connection for diagnostics, right? If I'm a field engineer and I need to check out an individual pipe within my factory, I can pull my tablet out, connect to that individual faulty node, and maybe pull some diagnostic information out of it. If there is a bug or a feature I need to add to it, I can also use that Bluetooth connection for an over-the-air download of new images to that individual node. Got it. Okay. In addition to that typical start topology, which its name sort of implies what that looks like, you've got maybe a central gateway or collector and sort of spokes on a wheel, right, where each spoke is an individual node centrally communicating to an individual gateway or, or collector in the middle. Another topology that we're seeing is a mesh protocol, mesh topology. And this is made possible by protocol stacks like Zigbee and Thread, which are also part of the Simplink platform and are possible with the LPSDK hardware. So with this, you know, affordable hardware kit, you have the ability of really evaluating different forms of connectivity, sub one gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz, Bluetooth, Zigbee, Thread, and then even evaluating different protocol topologies. You know, do I want a star topology in my environment or is a mesh topology maybe more suitable for my specific needs? So with this one hardware kit, you really have the ability of identifying what the right combination of technologies makes the most sense for your use case. Okay, so I can definitely see how this kit gives me a lot of flexibility in my connectivity. And I've used your launch pad kits before, but can you tell me a bit about how these play together? Yeah, it's a great question. Yeah, so the Launchpad ecosystem is something that has been around for almost 10 years now, enabling different type of embedded developers through various Launchpad form factors. Our Launchpad kits are typically your bare bone hardware development kit, features some sort of TI MCU in the middle, and it really gives developers an open slate, or an open platform to create whatever it is you're creating. This new LPSDK kit, however, is fully enclosed. We include a few sensors on board. We provide some battery solutions as well. So it allows software developers to get up and running much more quickly. They don't have to worry about bringing their own hardware, creating their own hardware design. They can immediately start evaluating the different protocol stacks with our LPSDK. And what an environment might look like is you actually might have you know, launchpad sensor tag kits coexisting with a regular launchpad so that you can very quickly evaluate these various forms of connectivity. So here on the left is where maybe a launchpad and a LPSDK kit might coexist in a star topology. On the right here is maybe what that might look like in a mesh solution where you have a launchpad as maybe one of your Zigbee edge nodes playing well with the other LPSDK kits. So very quickly, customers and developers can go from one connected thing to dozens or maybe in some cases hundreds of connected nodes. Okay, I get that. Now walk me through some of the things that differentiate the sensor tag kits. So the Launchpad sensor tag kit is, is a part of the Launchpad ecosystem, and we'll talk a little bit more how they might actually work together for a full-blown debug experience. But in short, 
I would break it up into this sort of spectrum where the launchpad development kits on the left, they're really more open-ended hardware. You get access to all the IO pins. There's an onboard debugger. You do have some flexible antenna options available on our launchpad kits. And this really allows the developer to bring in the rest of the system. We haven't selected sensors for you. We haven't determined what your power options are going to be. We want this to sort of be that blank slate so you can bring your innovation and create whatever it is you're trying to create. We're going to get out of your way. That's really what the launchpad kits on the left are for. The Launchpad Sensor Tag Kits, this new kit that we're announcing here, it has some implications, right? There's a full-blown enclosure. We provide some battery options in the case of a AAA battery or a coin cell, and then we even selected a few sensors for you. So it's great for that out-of-box capability. It gives you an example of where these products, how they might maybe manifest themselves in a physical way. And we really wanted to provide both options. So depending on where you are in your development cycle, you can go full-blown hardware Launchpad Development Kit, or maybe focus a little more on the software and the connectivity with the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kits. Got it. Okay, cool. And I'm intrigued. You mentioned there were a lot of sensors already built into this kit. Totally, yeah. So maybe what we can do is look at a sort of bisection or cross-section of the LPSDK. As you mentioned, there's a few sensors that we've hand-selected here, many of which are enabled by TI products. First and foremost, we have a TI DRV5032. This is an extremely low-power Hall effect sensor for detecting the presence of a magnet. So a use case here could be for detecting whether a door or a window is open or closed, right? If the magnet is, is detected, we can assume a door is closed. If it's not, maybe the door is opened. So that's a use case that we're seeing in a lot of building automation factory automation and home automation. And that's been integrated into the LPSDK. In addition to that, we also have a TI HDC 2080. This is a high accuracy temperature and humidity sensor. And this is great for environmental sensing. We're actually working with lots of developers, lots of customers who are interested in monitoring temperature and humidity, one of which is a solution provider who's been developing elevators for, for years. And now they want to retroactively integrate wireless sensors to their elevator shafts. So being able to use something like the LPSDK kit, and they can, you know, strewn this up and down their elevator shaft to detect moisture within that environment. And maybe they can use that for, you know, determining the growth of mold or whatever that might be. They could use maybe some of these other sensors for doing predictive maintenance. And if a motor is vibrating at a particular frequency, maybe they can use that information to determine that some repair might be needed before they lose a shaft within their building. So predictive maintenance is a use case we're really excited about here as well. The third sensor is another TI solution, the OPT3001. It's an ambient light sensor, so this allows you to determine the brightness of an environment. So obvious use cases might be building and factory automation. We're also seeing this in manufacturing plants, where you might want to scatter this across your environment to determine if any product, medication, produce was exposed to light when it shouldn't have been. And that's a very unique use case that's possible with this particular sensor. And then we also have things like a three-axis accelerometer. This is for detecting tilt and motion. We're seeing some innovators take our solution here for garage door sensors. So determining whether or not that garage door is opened or closed based on the tilt of the sensor. Lots of applications possible with that. But beyond the four sensors that we've selected here, we really want developers to remove the enclosure and actually start bringing in their own sensing capability, whatever that might be. And they can do that through the Booster Pack compatible headers here. So they can leverage our Booster Pack ecosystem of plugin modules, or they can simply wire up their own components to iteratively get to their final product, whatever that may be. So how does bringing in my own sensors and using the Booster Packs work with the form factor with this, having its own form factor and stuff? So Booster Pack compatibility was something we were wanting to enable with this solution from the very, very beginning. We have about 80 plus different Booster Packs in our ecosystem today, both from TI product lines as well as third parties. You can see a few examples here on the right where you might take a LCD display and simply plug it on top through our Booster Pack module. We have a consistent connector, and this allows us to very easily drop in these sort of system solutions so that you can do some hardware prototyping without having to design your own hardware. So here you can see something like an LCD display for maybe visualizing sensor data. You can visualize your signal strength, other aspects of your network. On the right is an example of an additional sensor that was added to the LPSDK. In this case, it's a moisture sensor. So you can actually drop this probe into a potted plant to determine you know, how moist the soil is and be able to track that and record that through our wireless technology. So we're really excited about the extendability of this hardware kit. You know, It's more than just a demo. Obviously, we provided a few sensors on board, but we really ultimately want developers to use this as a jumping off platform for their own solutions, whatever that might be. And being able to give that hardware flexibility Flexibility was a very important aspect of how we designed this kit from the beginning. Very cool. Now, you mentioned an app earlier. I'm intrigued. What all will this app let me do? 
So the app is going to be available for iOS and Android. There's a few screenshots here to kind of showcase some of the capability that's available. So with some of the onboard sensors of the LPSDK, you can actually start streaming that data to a mobile phone once it's provisioned. So you can actually connect to your LPSDK kit over Bluetooth and actually start visualizing that sensor data in real time. You know, whether that be the light sensor, the moisture sensor, temperature sensor, et cetera. But other use cases that are possible with the mobile app is doing a over the air download. So if there's new examples or new images, even custom images that you've created, you have the ability of loading them into the app and doing an over the air download to the LPSDK to give it a new image and enable a new use case. And that's all done wirelessly through a Bluetooth over the air download capability that we have. So the mobile app is obviously going to only enable the Bluetooth capability that this device has, but that doesn't mean you know you can take advantage of the other wireless protocols as well, whether that be Zigbee, Thread, or the sub one gigahertz connection, in addition to the Bluetooth capability that that the mobile app can exercise. Okay, got it, very cool. Now, once I've played with the demos and I'm ready to start working on my app, what do I do next? Where do I go from there? So this is really where the real fun begins, right? This is where innovators can bring their ideas to life much more quickly while leveraging the LPSDK as that jumping off point. So we touched on it a second ago, how it coincides and complements our existing Launchpad development kits. I and mean, here's a very real use case of how that's enabled. Using our Launchpad development kits, they actually have an onboard debugger that allows you to plug that into your computer over a USB connection. And we can wire that over to the LPSDK to take advantage of that debug probe. So this allows you to not just download new code to your LPSDK, but you can set breakpoints, you can watch memory, you can watch variables, and really start to fine tune your application and, and debug it in a way that you can feel comfortable building 10K, 100K, a million of these things. Through the debug capability of our hardware, you have the ability of truly optimizing your solution and fine tuning it before mass production. From a software perspective, we have an development environment called Code Composer Studio. You may already be familiar with that environment. It's our coding solution that we've had for several years now. It supports all TI embedded processors. It's free to download. So developers can use that to immediately start creating their own applications. They can leverage our SDK that we touched on a second ago. They can import an example that might be close to whatever it is they themselves are trying to do and immediately start tweaking that code example to get to that final solution. So the LPSDK very well complements the regular launchpad kit for that debug use case. And then on the right here is a screenshot of a brand new tool that we've just released called Sysconfig. This is a software environment for actually configuring the different capabilities we have in our software development kit. So we touched on it earlier where the SDK is integrated with a ton of capability, whether that be a stack like Zigbee, Thread, Bluetooth, etc. But we also have our peripheral drivers integrated into the SDK as well. And what Sysconfig does is it elevates all of the capabilities, all of the flexibility that we have in our software into an intuitive graphical tool. So through drop downs, check boxes, sliders, you have the ability of actually generating code to start to fine tune and tweak the software underneath. So this really de gives developers the ability to, you know, again, iteratively get to that final product, whatever that might be. Start with one of our code examples, but use a tool like Sysconfig to start tweaking it and extending it to get closer and closer to your, what your final vision might be. So this is a new software tool. It's integrated into Code Composer Studio. It's also available in our cloud environment, available at dev.ti.com. So you can actually start doing some of this software development in the cloud without having to do any downloads or installations. So we're really focused on getting developers up and running very quickly. Very cool. I'm definitely excited to get started with Sensor Tag myself. I'm going to click that link and go to the Mauser page for more information. Adrian, it was an absolute pleasure talking with you today. Thank you so much for joining me. Yeah, it was a lot of fun, Amelia. We'd be happy to come back uh, anytime to talk about any new developments we've got. It was a lot of fun. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about the Launchpad Sensor Tag Kit from Texas Instruments. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talks section of EE Journal. It's right across the top. Or head on over to YouTube, youtube.com slash eejournal.